It's World Habitat Day. And this year's theme is even more poignant as we look at how we can use technology to sustainably manage our surroundings. Here in Jamaica, the government, through the ministries of local government and economic growth and job creation, have been partnering to ensure that all waste produced by human activity is properly managed. One of the latest initiatives is a pilot project which will see the repurposing of tires at the island's dumps as energy for the Carib Cement Company Limited. You too can play your part by properly discarding your garbage. Let's all play our part to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business. Our program continues with a message, then the news, so stay with us. No dash, no paper, no dash, no plastic. Dispose your garbage responsibly. No know how to recycle. Learn it quick and if you drop it, better pick up every piece of it. Plastics last forever. Don't forget the bits. Cause when them touch the street, them end up in at the sea. Collect pan the reef where they fish them feed. And when you want seafood, I eat Keep your eat. Island clean. So clean. From the peaks to the beach. So clean. No dirty up Jamaica. Please don't do it. No dirty up Jamaica, no dirty up Jamaica, no dirty up Jamaica, no dirty up Jamaica. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, October 7. Jamaica is to create the first Caribbean green bond listing on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. The move is expected to place the island as the Caribbean country of choice to conduct climate smart and sustainable business. Almost $583,000 US dollars in support has been approved by the Green Climate Fund GCF. Jamaica's proposal, which was submitted on August 12, was approved by the GCF on October 4. We recognize that the government's budget will not be enough in ensuring a strong local response to building resilience. However, we also recognize that the government has a key role to play as market maker and regulator in mobilizing, incentivizing, and partnering with the private sector in financing areas of strategic climate action. Prime Minister Holness was addressing Monday's opening of the Green Climate Fund Private Investment for Climate Conference, GPIC. The October 7 to 9 summit is being held in Incheon, Republic of Korea. The GPIC is a global marketplace where private and public sector entities come together to accelerate climate action in developing countries. While in the Republic of Korea, Mr. Holness is expected to lead a panel discussion on moving climate ambitions forward. The Prime Minister met with the Deputy Executive Director of the Green Climate Fund, Javier Manzanares. He also met with the Jamaican diaspora in the Asian country. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang is in charge of government, while Prime Minister Holness is on assignment. Technology Minister Favel Williams is reiterating calls for Jamaicans to become more aware of cyber threats and take the necessary steps to safeguard their data. Minister Williams says as the world becomes more connected, issues surrounding cyber threats, data privacy and protection are becoming more commonplace. Additionally, to the business people and government, our systems and networks need to be equipped with state-of-the-art protection mechanisms to mitigate cyber attacks as best as possible. As individuals, businesses, and government, we have to raise the awareness of the value of protecting our data and taking the necessary steps to ensure that as far as possible, we secure our systems. 
Minister Williams was speaking recently at the DESCON 2019 Security and Encryption Conference. The technology minister says while the ability to connect and engage with technology for business and other pursuits has become a great enabler for growth and development, it also has its disadvantages in the form of cyber attacks and cyber threats. Cybersecurity experts predict that by 2021, cyber crimes will cost the world about six trillion a year. Global ransomware damage costs are predicted to hit $20 billion US and businesses will fall victim to a ransomware attack every 11 seconds up from every 14 seconds. Consequently, the minister is appealing to business operators to train their employees in cybersecurity. The Senate on Friday approved a 90-day extension of the State of Public Emergency, SOE, for the St. Andrew South Police Division. Since the start of the operation in July, murders have reduced by 58% and shootings by 47%. Twelve firearms, 120 ammunitions, and eight magazines were also recovered, while 11 persons have been arrested and charged. Leader of Government Business Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith said while the SOE has had successes, the division is not yet where it needs to be. She said a committee is being established to track success under the SOEs. The Prime Minister had indicated that there would be a quote-unquote epoch-style oversight committee established to monitor progress and that the framework for this, however, had to be developed he had charged persons to set up a working group within the partnership and they are working through and with this ACON group that has been mentioned to take that matter forward. Approximately $1 billion in savings to the government has been realized from the rationalization of public bodies to date. Executive Director of the Transformation Implementation Unit, TIU, in the Ministry of Finance, Maria Thompson-Walters, made the disclosure at a JIS think tank recently. Our finance team is working to create a model to track those savings back into the consolidated fund. So those are real savings, not just things that we um, add up on a piece of paper and to ensure that the consolidated fund is impacted positively from the action that we're doing and that we have funds available to deal with areas such as health, security and education. Mrs. Thompson-Walter says 30 public bodies have been rationalized to date with plans in place for another 18 entities to be merged or reintegrated into their parent ministries by the end of the calendar year. Among the objectives of the rationalization process are to ensure greater efficiency and effectiveness in public sector service delivery, reduce costs and improve governance. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is urging the public to take precautionary measures to reduce the likelihood of being struck by lightning. Over the last four weeks, a child died shortly after being struck by lightning, while a number of schoolboys have been injured by the weather element during football matches. In a release, the ministry states that a lightning bolt is a million times more powerful than household current, as it carries up to 100 million volts of electricity. When someone is struck by lightning, an electrical shock occurs that can cause burns and even stop the person's heart or breathing. The ministry says as the latter part of the hurricane season approaches, thunderstorms are more likely to occur and any thunderstorm is a potential killer since they generate lightning. Persons should therefore pay attention to weather forecasts, allowing time to plan for threatening weather. Stay inside a well-constructed building away from conducting elements such as water and electrical wires or devices. If on the outside, stay away from trees and halt recreational activities in or on water. Wait at least 30 minutes before resuming, avoiding plumbing or electrical circuits. If inside a vehicle, roll the windows up and do not touch the outer frame of the car. If a person is struck by lightning, they should get immediate medical attention. And finally, the government is establishing international branches of the Global Tourism Resilience and Crisis Management Center. The first satellite center will be established at the Kenyatta University in Nairobi, Kenya in December. The second will be opened in Morocco in January 2020, the third in South Africa in March 2020, and thereafter in Nigeria and Seychelles. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says the satellite network is one of several key outcomes emerging from discussions at the recent United Nations World Tourism Organization meeting in Russia. 
The um, resilience centers also establish strong relations with the um, Global Resilience um, Council in London. What the, that partnership after would do is that the council would be responsible for international seminars on behalf of, of us. The tourism minister made the disclosure at a recent press conference in New Kingston. The Global Tourism Resilience and Crisis Management Center, based at the University of the West Indies, Mona, is managed by the Ministry of Tourism. The center is established to build and fortify the capacity of tourism-dependent economies to deal with shocks impacting the industry. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Garbage collection, maintenance of public sanitary conveniences, upkeep of cemeteries, provision of water shops, road improvement, street lights, poor relief programs, community beautification. All these services are funded by you. Yes, they are, when you pay your property tax. Pay your annual property tax to make Jamaica the place of choice for all. Government is serious about providing affordable housing solutions for its citizens. Hear more from Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Now is the time to be optimistic about the future. Now is the time to build the new Jamaica which we all desire. The National Housing Trust, NHT, will also make owning a home easier. As of May 1, all NHT mortgages will see a 1% reduction in their interest rates. The income bans have been expanded to allow mortgages to access home grants. Prospective mortgages will have access to $6.5 million, a $1 million increase. There will be an increase in the construction loan limit for NHT lots. And starting May 1, the Trust will introduce intergenerational mortgages. This budget is not just given back to a certain class of people. This budget is providing something for everyone in Jamaica. The National Housing Trust has set aside $39.4 billion to increase home ownership on the island in its 2019-20 budget. Of the 8,640 housing starts to be initiated, 4,714 are expected to be completed in the year. Partnerships have been struck with the Housing Agency of Jamaica to regularize communities in five parishes. 33 housing schemes across 11 parishes will be upgraded at a cost of $1.7 billion. The Trust will also be securing communities built through a $2 billion seven-parish police station upgrading project. And the housing component of HOPE will be initiated with a new $1 billion social housing program. We are going to be looking specifically now at people who have physical disabilities and the very poor. Hurricanes can strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan. Map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, disasters do happen, so be prepared. A key component of ensuring that Jamaicans can access housing solutions is the proper management of our lands. See how the responsible agency accomplishes this. Becoming a landowner is a significant feat for most people. That feeling of entitlement and success of being able to turn your own key and say, welcome to my home. This could be you, and the government is doing its part through the Adjudication Services Division of the National Land Agency. Systematic registration is defined as the process of land titling 
through a determined jurisdiction and it's performed on a commune by commune basis. Now what exactly th does that mean? It means that it's the methodical and orderly registration of parcels of land in a designated area using the adjudication process. Adjudication is defined as the process through which existing rights in a parcel of land are finally and authoritatively ascertained. Key things to note, adjudication doesn't alter existing rights or create new ones. It merely establishes what rights exist on ground. Now that we've established the definition of these very important terms, let's get down to the meat of the matter. You have a piece of land or you've been living on land that you do not have the title for, but have legitimate claims. Let's find out how you can go about becoming certified landowners utilizing the National Land Agency's adjudication services. Systematic registration may be new to Jamaica, but it's certainly not new to the world. At the National Land Agency, we have a wealth of information on unregistered land parcels in Jamaica. So currently we know that the parishes with the lowest rates of registration are Portland and St. Elizabeth. So we'll definitely be targeting those two parishes. The mandate of the Adjudication Services Division is to assist landowners who have been in open, undisturbed and undisputed possession of their land for upwards of 12 years to claim ownership of their land via systematic registration using the adjudication process. There's a proposed adjudication process for systematic registration and we have benchmarked other jurisdictions and the adjudication process will entail the following. The first is the identification of an adjudication area, project area. The next step will look at what are the areas in those parishes where there's a lot of economic activity or they're near town centers, you know, probably farming, farmlands, where these farmers will be able to benefit from having a certificate of title to use as collateral security. Once, you know, an area has been identified, a recommendation will be made to the minister to declare that area as an area for systematic registration. Surveying will go hand in hand with the adjudication process. So you can look out for the team from the Adjudication Services Division as they will be situated within the selected communities. These teams will be visiting households parcel by parcel, interviewing landowners and investigating whether or not they have been in open, undisturbed and undisputed possession of their land for over 12 years. The adjudication record it will be published in a daily newspaper circulating not only in Jamaica but across the diaspora. So it's not only notice to community members and notice to Jamaica, but it is notice to the world that persons are claiming to be the owners of land. No, let me start with the positive. Where there are no objections to the adjudication record. As the director, I'll be able to issue what is known as an adjudication certificate. And this adjudication certificate will be deemed to be conclusive proof of ownership. This is now the documentary proof that the person on that certificate is in fact the owner of the land. Where there are objections, however, all these objections will be referred to the adjudication committees and adjudication committees are established in accordance with section 9 of the Special Provisions Act to determine ownership rights in land. Now that I've given you the basic information that you need to regularize your status as a landowner, it's now up to you to make that step. All the best. Protect yourself from the flu virus. Visit your nearest health center or doctor to get the flu vaccine. Cover your mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water or by using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid the spread of germs by not touching your eyes, mouth, or nose. And be sure to regularly disinfect surfaces and objects that are used often. Remember, your health is your responsibility. Though World Teachers' Day was celebrated on October 5, we continue to highlight the important role the men and women who educate the society play in our development. Take a look.
Jamaica is becoming numb. We see we are bombarded with all kinds of savagery and dastardly acts that the level of sensitivity which would spur the nation to stand up and say no more that sensitivity that edge is being dulled and we're becoming more accepting it is the teachers who will have to draw the line in the sand and defend our moral standards because each time someone is murdered in a community or a child is killed and then children start to become accustomed to this there is a devaluation in the importance of life and if there is no reinforcement of the importance of life then we continue to slide down this very slippery slope so teachers have to have in them and principals in how they structure their schools programs to reinforce these very important values you have to care when everybody else is giving up you cannot give up more than the lessons you deliver and the instructions you give in the classroom you cannot give up on our children Businesses operating within parishes under the state of emergency, your closing time has been extended. In St. Catherine and Clarendon, clubs, fast food restaurants, petrol stations, and establishments operating under a tavern license, your opening hours are 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. For supermarkets, grocery shops, haberdasheries, and other businesses, opening hours are 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. In Westmoreland, Hanover, and St. James, Business closing time is between 10 p.m. and midnight. As we celebrate Heritage Month this October, we take a look at the work of the Jamaica National Heritage Trust in preserving our artifacts. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the headquarters house, home of the Jamaica National Heritage Trust. We're going to take you through some of the ropes in the methods in conservation, so please come along with us. Thanks for joining us in our conservation lab. You, we have here working with us Mr. Darrington Ferguson as well as Mr. Frank Gale and we'll be looking at some of the methods they will be applying to different material types for the preservation of our material culture of Jamaica. First of all, we have here some cannonballs that are usually found with some extent of corrosion. Mr. Ferguson is actually removing mechanically some of the concretion from a cannonball and after he has removed that then we would wire it this wired metal object would then we would then install in our elect electrolytic tank in the it, process of electrolysis what we are actually doing we are primarily reversing the process of corrosion once it has been electrolyzed it would look something like this so we would then proceed to brush to remove any loose rust that would be left on it. We would then put the iron object in some pure water, which we call deionized water, and that would be heated to ensure that the metal itself would facilitate the extraction of any impurities that might be left in the body of the iron. After that, we would dry the iron object. Most times we dry it in alcohol and that would remove the water from the body of the object. And after drying, we would take a substance we call tannic acid, um, applying several coats and it would form somewhat a stable surface for the iron object. And then the final stage is waxing to provide a coating or a lacquer on the surface of the iron object. Here we have Mr. Gale, he's actually applying orthophosphoric acid to remove slight rusting or um, corrosion from the case of a sword. He is actually 
um, using what we call a chemical as well as a mechanical means of so doing. We have close to it the extractor system, which is used to remove harmful fumes from the atmosphere in order to make the environment a much healthier one in which and a safer one for us to work. Lead corrodes by forming mainly lead sulfite and lead carbonate. So we would be soaking it first of all in ammonium acetate and that would basically remove within a few hours the lead carbonate. In order to remove the, any residue of ammonium acetate that might be left on the lead, we would then rinse it quickly for a short time period, just rinse it in a bath of a very dilute solution of um, hydrochloric acid. If there are any corrosion left at that stage, then we would remove that mechanically, either with a, very likely with a glass bristle brush. After that, we do as we would with the iron. Coming over here now, we have copper or copper material. We have been soaking this copper in um, a substance we prepare in the lab, which we call alkaline Rochelle salt. The alkaline Rochelle salt will remove from it largely the what we call bronze disease. So we use, we soak it in the solution. The chemi chemical will dissolve the um, bronze disease. After that has been dissolved, then we would rinse in, for example, a dilute solution of sulfuric acid to remove any slight impurities or corrosion product that might be left there. After that, we will, as we do with the other metals, Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you were well informed by the information we've imparted today and you're welcome to join us at any time, particularly at our heritage sites. And when you see our heritage sites, you see the artifacts that are there, you will appreciate to a greater extent the effort that has gone in to its preservation. And that's all the time we have on this station, but only for today. We return tomorrow, round about the same time. Until then, your engagement with us doesn't have to end with this show. Send an email to jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm. Join us on all the major social media sites. Visit our website and download our mobile app. You may also subscribe to our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire team here at the GIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.